Are you sure? Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never ask a bride why she's getting married. Don't wear a skirt on a windy day. Deodorant is not a shower. Don't sniff chili flakes. <laughs> and don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully. In the corporate world, there is the concept of greenfield and brownfield. So you can have greenfield growth or brownfield growth or greenfield expansion or brownfield expansion. The definition is quite easy and I will come to that in a minute. What we are talking about today is not anything corporate. We are talking about pure politics. And that tells us that the BJP has chosen in this election as they aim for the number of 370 for themselves, which is what they are claiming for themselves and the target they've set. As they are looking at that number and that target, they have decided in principle on a brownfield expansion, on brownfield growth. What is the difference? Greenfield is when you set up something on your own, something, some, something which has grown organically with your ideology, with your beliefs, etc. That's how the BJP was originally, because this is where the BJP took its cadres from the RSS or those who came trained and indoctrinated in the RSS culture from the shakhas, joined the party, joined politics. That, that was the greenfield phase of the BJP. Brownfield is when they started getting defected from outside. Now, as you start winning and as you can promise power, that's when you draw defectors. Defectors don't come in because they suddenly buy into your ideology. So don't go by all these pictures of parades of defectors every day who then pose with senior BJP leaders with BJP scarves saying, I really believe in the ideology or I really believe in the party, etc. They are coming because they think it's more likely that they will win an election on the BJP's ticket. That's the reason they are coming. These people have been in other parties in other places, have been parts of members of other ideologies or followers of other ideologies. That's the reason we are calling it a brownfield expansion. In industry, for example, a greenfield is when, it, is when you take a piece of land, build a plant there or, or set up a new industry. Brownfield is when you acquire something and then make improvements over it. That definition should be quite clear. Now, the BJP... Why are we talking about this? Every party, every party takes defectors. So you can't judge a party morally for taking defectors. That's not our idea either. At the same time, a party which is on a winning track or which is more likely to be winning is also more expected to be a magnet for defectors. How much has it worked for the BJP this time? How far has the BJP gone? The fact is that BJP has gone to a distance this time in its brownfield expansion that justifies this episode of cut the clutter because this is a key phenomenon in this coming election. Of the 417 seats for which the BJP has announced candidates, as many as 116 are defectors. 116 are defectors. Many of them new, many of them new, many of them a little bit old. So we are stretching this definition a little. For example, a couple here might be people who joined maybe in 2004, but they were in well-established other parties. And these are prominent people, say Menika Gandhi and also Basavaraj Bomai, who then later became chief minister of Karnataka. So th there is a couple of people like that, but generally a bulk of these have joined after 2014. So of these people of the 116, 97 have joined the BJP 2014 onwards. Why is 2014 onwards? Because that is where the BJP won its election the first time. In fact, if you see the three elections, three Lok Sabha election years of 2014, 2019, 2024, 55% of all defectors have joined in these election years. It's not to say that they've not been joining or coming on board in BJP crossing over between these elections, but 55% have actually defected during in the course of these three Lok Sabha elections. Now, where have these people come from? These people have come from all parties. The bulk of them, as you would expect, are from the Congress party. So if you look at about 116, right, 116 right now, of that about 
37 to 39, depending on how you define people, because people also change parties. They go from one to the other. They don't come directly from party A to party B. So sometimes they've been to party C, D, E in the middle. So about 37 to 40, depending on how you define this, have come from the Congress party. That is something to be expected. There is also a slightly more complex phenomenon where some of the members of BJP's allies are contesting on BJP tickets. So we should not let that confuse us. This is mostly in Tamil Nadu. So three allies in Tamil Nadu, in Velour, Perambalur and Tenkasi. These are allies who are contesting on the BJP tickets. So that should not let us confuse us. Now, as we go along, I will also explain to you that in this process, BJP has taken defectors from everywhere. It's taken defectors from its adversaries, which is understandable, and some even from those following really distant or adversarial ideologies, including two communists, which include one from Communist Party of India, Marxist, that is CPM. We will talk about it as we go along. They have taken defectors from their allies. For example, TDP in Andhra Pradesh, in Tamil Nadu, for, from former ally ADMK. In Odisha, a bunch of defectors from BJD with which negotiations were going on for an alliance until last week. They've also borrowed candidates from the families of founders of their allies. For example, JDS, they've got a families. JDS is an ally of the BJP in Karnataka, but, but they've got a son-in-law, Dr. Manjunath, is the BJP's candidate from Bengaluru Rural, while BJP also has seat sharing with JDS in other parts of the state. So it is in this situation that we have to look at these pictures. See the kind of magnet the BJP has become. 29 of these defectors who have now been fielded by the BJP have come into the party in less than two, less than the previous two years. So they are really very new defectors and they've really been taken in because one, they see themselves winning. They see themselves as strong candidates, but if they are strong candidates in their constituencies, they might have a better chance of winning with the BJP than in being in opposition of the BJP. And second for the BJP also, they've been admitted because these are seats where the BJP thinks that these candidates will bring some weight of their own and that will that'll be useful for, the, for them. Now for the BJP, this has not been easy. This has caused some rebellion for the BJP. So in about a hundred seats, the BJP has faced rebellion they haven't they haven't flinched very much as i speak now you will see the list of these defectors defectors who are who have now been fielded by the bjp on your screen and see that as we run through it it's alphabetical by the state so if you see andhra pradesh for example the first state to feature there are candidates that the bjp has borrowed or acquired from the congress in fact the first candidate is d purandeshwari who happens to be NTR's daughter was a minister in Manmohan Singh's Council of Ministers. She was a junior minister in education ministry of what used to be called HRD then and Dr. Manmohan Singh used to speak the world of her. So Deep Purundeshwari actually on, the, on this list is the first candidate borrowed from the Congress in 2014. Then the next one is from YSRP, which is a regional party which has voted through these, through the, through these years with the BJP in Rajya Sabha. That is Kotapalli Gita from Araku. It's a scheduled tribe constituency. And then the third seat again tells you a story. I told you that BJP has taken from everywhere. It's taken from adversary, from a semi-ally, so adversary the Congress, semi-ally YSRP. And then third one is CM Ramesh and Anaka Palle from TDP. So that is from a full ally. So take talent from a rival, a semi-ally and a full ally. But once again, if you look at the list, you can see that all these defections have not taken place right now. Geeta had come in in 2019 from ISRP and CM Ramesh has, had come in from TDP in 2019. All I'm saying is that they've been taking talent, talent from all parties of all kinds over these three Lok Sabha years, that is 2014, 2019, 2024. The next name from Andhra Pradesh is Krim Kumar Reddy, who served as chief minister for the Congress party. He's joined just last year in 2023. Fifth candidate, I am particularly focusing on one state because that's the state where the BJP is trying to break into because if they have to get anywhere close to the numbers that they are looking at, 
they have to get more seats from these states from where they have not been getting any seats or if at all it just a couple or not more than that so kiran kumar reddy from the congress from rajampet then the next candidate tirupati scheduled caste reserve that is vara prasad rao from ysr cp just taken a 2024 defection again if you come to assam they have taken from li that is agp which used to be bjp's ally to so sarbanand sonobal who's a former chief minister as well cabinet minister was taken from the agp albeit in 2011 then from the congress party that's a rival you can understand that all assam students union which is in a way the parent of agp in bihar in bihar they've taken from rjd from jdu see how this list runs rjd ramkripal yadav in patliputra jdu sushil kumar singh in aurangabad chatisgarh see relatively recent arrivals in the bjp chintamani maharaj from the congress in 2023 kalaben delkar then in dadra and nagar haveli from shiv sena in 2024 and if i focus particularly on relate, relatively the more recent arrivals in haryana six of the 10 bjp candidates are defectors despite the fact that in the last election 2019 bjp had won 10 out of 10 a perfect 10 score and bjp's overall vote percentage was upwards of 58% so that is a killer vote percentage in spite of that the bjp has felt constrained to find so many defectors including ranjit chotala who's one of the sons of devilal he had been in the congress party for a long time and then had become independent so he's also got the bjp ticket this time he by the way just made some fame or infamy by making some unkind comments about the brahmin community for which the bjp is doing quite a bit of cleaning up then you then you carry on as i focus again on the more recent acquisitions we come to jharkhand Shrimati Geeta Koda Geeta Koda is the wife of Madhu Koda the former chief minister who went to jail on charges of corruption convicted on charges of corruption that is Geeta Koda and then Sita Soren who Sita Soren she is the daughter in law the second daughter in law of Shibu Soren so Shibu Soren's son Hemant Soren is in jail his wife you saw hugging in solidarity Sunita Kejriwal in Delhi at the opposition rally because her husband is in jail but her sister in law that is Shubhu Soren's other daughter in law has joined the BJP Sita Soren and she is their candidate from Dumka that's a scheduled tribe constituency again as you carry on in Karnataka S Balaraj a 2023 defection in Kannur in Kerala C Raghunath from Congress a 2023 defection in Pathanam Titta in Kerala Anil Antony the son of AK Antony from the Congress also a 2023 acquisition so once again a pattern emerges in the states where BJP is not strong organically it is not waiting till it can grow its own cadres to become leaders it's quite willing to acquire from outside that's the reason i called it brownfield not greenfield we carry on looking at this list again focusing on the more recent acquisitions if you see bjd and i i will give you a state by count as we go along so it, so in odisha if you see defector from the bjd taken in 2019 that is avimanyu sethi balabhadra maji and bajent j panda they are contesting from bhadrak scheduled caste nabrangpur scheduled tribe reserved and kendrapada respectively then you come to the more recent acquisitions of the bjp in odisha 2023 malvika keshri deo from bjd in kalahandi 2024 then there are two that is pradeep kumar pani grahi in berhampur and bhartru hari mehtab in katak bhartru hari mehtab happened in fact just last week or or or, or there about these are both 2024 defections and remember until a few weeks back talks were quite seriously on between the bjp and bjd on an alliance in the state yet another state where the bjp hardly existed or har- hardly counted for anything but where it's trying to where but where it's trying to build itself through acquisitions is in punjab in punjab the bjp had an ally that is the akali dal a strong ally so they used to be win a couple of seats two three like that now they don't have an alliance so what have they done they basically carried out a leverage buyout of the congress party's talent from there so we know that sunil jakhar who who was a congress party leader he is not the bjp chief in the state we also know manpreet badal who was the finance minister under the congress party before that in the akali dal 
He also joined the BJP. Those two are not contesting this time. But there is Praneet Kaur, who happens to be the wife of Captain Amrinder Singh, the former Congress Party Chief Minister, who also joined the BJP. And Ravneet Singh Bittu, the sitting MP from Ludhiana, who also happens to be the grandson of Sardar Bayan Singh, who served as Chief Minister under the Congress Party. A die-hard Congress family. From there, the BJP has taken a candidate. Even more significant than the recent Congress defections in Punjab is one from Ahmadmi Party. That is Sushil Kumar Rinku. He had only fairly recently won the Jalandhar seat in a by-election by a large margin, defeating the Congress Party because it was a by-election, because the Congress Party sitting MP had passed away. His wife had been fielded by the Congress Party. He, Rinku, on, on an app ticket, defeated her by a large margin. He has now joined the BJP as well. So once again, the BJP has gone looking at whoever might be winnable, forget about ideology and forget about where somebody has been. I'm jumping Tamil Nadu now because Tamil Nadu is not a state where the BJP exists very much. So you would expect them to get some talent from outside. Plus, it's not as if they they've taken really heavyweight defectors from outside. Jump to Telangana after Tamil Nadu. We are going alphabetically. There you see how many has the BJP taken from BRS and the Congress party. Again, the recent ones, BB Patil in Zahirabad from BRS just defected the other day in 2024. Another 2024 defection from BRS is P. Bharat in Nagar Kurnool. It's a scheduled cast reserved seat and and four more defections from BRS in 2024. That is that is Godam Nagesh in Adilabad, scheduled tribe reserved. Saida Reddy in Nalgonda. Professor Azmira Sitaram Nayak in Mehbubabad, scheduled tribe reserved. And Tandra Vinod Rao at Khamam. Telangana, in fact, is a more striking case because seven of the 12 defectors that the BJP is fielding, 12 out of 17 overall, but seven of these 12 have been, have been acquired in this year, in 2024. That means in about three months. These also include, again, a 2024 defection. This one from Congress Party, Gomasa Srinivas from Peda Palle, Scheduled Caste Reserved. I also notice a trend here. Have you seen this list? If you see this list carefully, you will find many of these defectors BJP is acquired are in, for, are in reserved seats, Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribe seats. So maybe there is a feeling that BJP particularly lacked talent or cadre base in those areas. And that's the reason those gaps are being filled up. And then you come to a very interesting other list. That is Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh is a state where BJP should be expecting to sweep anyway in Modi's name and also in Yogi's name. Yet 20 of the 64 seats for which BJP has announced candidates or so far 20 are acquisitions from other parties. Not all of them are very recent, but 20 are acquisitions from other parties. So they are not from the BJP cadre or from the RSS cadre. Many of these came in in 2014, 2017, 18, 19 and so on. But some have come in 2024 as well. For example, Ambedkar Nagar seat, Ritesh, Ritesh Pandey taken from BSP. From Samajwadi Party, Ghansham Lodi for Rampur taken in 2021. Jitin Prasada from the Congress taken in 2021. Kripa Shankar Singh, the Bombay Dada, taken from the Congress Party in 2021. So BJP is now finding seats for all these people because it sees them more venerable. I am surprised because it would be reasonable to presume that BJP would have thought that between Modi's name and yogis, they will get almost anybody to win on their ticket in Uttar Pradesh. So they can hold a lamppost election. That means what is a lamppost election? This lamppost is my candidate, vote for it and people vote for the lamppost. But they are not doing that. They are not taking that chance. Even in a state like UP, where they expect, they should expect to win everything or almost everything, they are now importing talent from outside. So once you, so now that you've seen the list, Look at some percentages which are state-wise. So the largest percentage for BJP to field defectors 
is obviously in states where BJP is not strong. That is reasonable. If you look at sheer percentages for larger states, that is states which have 10 seats or, of, or more, then the highest percentage is in Telangana. That is 12 out of 17. That's almost 71%. 70.59, but let me round it off. Almost 71%. Then Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh is more than 83%, but also remember BJP is only fielding six candidates. Five of the six are defectors because BJP did not have people of its own. In Jharkhand, six of the 14, that is 43%. In Haryana, six of 10, that is 60%. And in Tamil Nadu, 11 of 23, that's 48%. And Uttar Pradesh, that's a surprise, 20 out of 64 yet, that is 31%. West Bengal, eight out of 41, that's almost 20%. Impor importantly, in West Bengal also, there are some really recent defectors. For example, Tapas Roy and Arjun Singh from TMC. Now, if you look at this star cast of defectors, the Dadas, 116 defectors who've gone to what they think is the winning side. Who is the most consummate trapeze artist? A trapeze artist in terms of, who's the most consummate trapeze artist in terms of traveling the longest distance. That is Mr. Khagen Murmu. Khagen Murmu from the CPIM. So he's jumped the distance from the CPM. That's, that's why I'm starting from the left. He's jumped the distance from the CPM to the BJP, to the right. And he's been fielded as the BJP candidate in Maldaha Uttar. So once again, it underlines for us the principle in politics and elections that in this business, Ultimately, winnability takes precedence over ideology and this applies to both. This applies to acquirer, in this case it's the BJP and also to the acquired, which is all of these 116 defectors. All the data I use today and the charts I read from, these have all been prepared by Amog Rometra of our political bureau and you will also see his story tomorrow on the print.in.